Okay guys, this is the whole new setup. But today, what we're gonna be talking about is my whole new server. This thing has dual monitors, which we're upgrading soon, a whole firewall on top, a OLED clock display, real ethernet switches plugged in that can be used at any time. Now the whole mainframe is connected to this B-Link, which is gonna be our main computer, two terabytes of storage, and a Raspberry Pi cluster we're working on with a portable hand radio on the side. Now this is all built into an actual mini rack and we're gonna be going over how I did it. Yeah, okay. So, if you've already been following the channel, we've been doing a lot of stuff with home labbing. We recently just got all of this in the mail. We've been building it, all that stuff. We have a few videos so far, but it's about to go to the next level, okay? So, uh, let's just get into it. So I've been doing research on an actual mini rack for quite some time. I was like, if I'm gonna be spending this much money, would I be better off getting a larger rack? Do they do the same things? And before all of that, I knew a few things I wanted with this. I wanted great airflow in the whole thing. I wanted easy cable management, enough room for both networking and the storage. And I wanted it to be quiet. Okay, I'm not trying to get a whole loud thing in my room. And yeah, it had to look cool. That was kind of one of the main things. Where am I alarm? <laughs> The first thing we're going to start with, starting with our actual rack, is going to be the rack itself. Now this is the Desk, mm, the Desk Pi Rackmate T1, and it is actually super nice quality for the price you're paying. It's all aluminum, but I did find that the side panels can make it hard to actually work. I do think it would be better if these could come off and you could access from the sides or stuff like that. But mm, other than that... Also, no magnetic screws, so these things were falling all over the place while putting these in. But everything came with those screws anyway, so I didn't find it such a big deal, but let's move on to the next thing. So inside of this rack here, well, more like on top, we're going to have our Protectly VP1210, I think. It's a small core, low power firewall, so that makes it super accessible, especially being in the small size factor it is. And we also have a B-Link. Now this mini PC right here does perform a lot of cool things. You could open virtual machines and all that stuff to practice on your cybersecurity. And that's kind of the whole point of why I got the server. For the actual switches, I'm using the real HD 2.5 gigahertz switch. And this was actually pretty small. It did have some room here. Wish it filled it up. But because this guy doesn't go to the end, this one doesn't. But it is actually pretty nice. These cables do bulk out a little, but in the end, that's just kind of how it's supposed to be looking. Now, a huge thing I saw online was the KVM. Now, the KVM was 400 bucks, which I was going to pay. But the thing with the KVM, it, is, uh, it connects everything. It also allows you to join from anywhere in the world. But then you're kind of paying more to be more unsecure. Because then you can have hackers that may be able to join from anywhere in the world. So I really just decided to skip that part. Now, another thing is I wanted it to be open. I didn't want it to be full. So here we have the fan, which I did kind of have to custom put in here because it was so large. And now it's just right here. Now, I could take these things off. Super easy for the legs. But it is holding the screen. Now, we are changing the screen out for a bigger one. I started with two smaller ones like this that are 4-inch. But then... They were too small, the quality wasn't too good. So now I switch to uh, 8 inch screen, but still, even that's too small. So I'm going to put that right here and get a 10 inch screen. And I feel like that'll really bring this together. Now, I did have a few empty shelves, so that's why I started bringing stuff in, like the power strips that go across. And I definitely want to fill this up more in the future. Um, This thing was already really pricey as it is, we could talk about that in a minute. Now, I wanted to get Proxmox on here. Way better than Windows, all of that stuff. I kind of have an issue now, though. The whole firewall is supposed to plug into my Ethernet, or through the LAN cables. And I don't have any in my room, and it's super far away from where they are in the house. So we're going to bring them around the house and drill a hole through my wall so I can get access to that type of stuff. And then the 2.5 gigahertz switches will be plugged in, and it'll make it easy to do all of that actual stuff. Now, like I was saying, I want to get Proxmox on here, but I can't do that until then. I already tried it, just have a few issues. So right now this is running Cinnamon Linux or Mint Linux. 
So when I do have the Proxmarks, I'm going to be able to, off the top of my head, but the main thing was virtual machines, and Proxmarks is obviously going to be the best for opening virtual machines just like that, that, and that. So that's the firmware I do want to get on here, and I think probably in a few weeks that could happen. So now, let's talk cost. Now, I'm not trying to flex here or anything. You could have your own server. But this is just to give you an idea if you're building your own. If you see this, if you like certain parts. So the rack itself, like the metal, with I had to order specific sheets and stuff, was probably like 200 bucks. Then the networking gear adds up super fast. The firewall was probably 300 The B-Link, 250 The the 2.5 gigahertz switch box is like 80 bucks, 2 terabytes, 200 bucks. So everything here does add up fast, especially if you want to add a Raspberry Pi cluster. Now, like I said, I don't have one yet, so I don't know where all the money went, okay? <laughs> Not even joking. But uh, then we have like the main server, storage. I had to get uh, cable management that was like 50 bucks, accessories, tables, all of that stuff. It added up to like eighteen hundred dollars. Now this was all my own money that I've been saving because I want to go into cybersecurity in my future, and this is the absolute best way for me to start. Er, I guess not start, but I've been doing this for three years. If you see my setup at all, but now I do admit I could have done the LEDs a little better, and I hate how they look, but I can go back and do that because they were pretty cheap, and I should have got some better ones. But why did I do all this? Honestly, because I just love it. I love all my gadgets. I love hacking. And I love where it's taking me. We're going to DEF CON this week. So, I love building... I loved building the systems that all work together. And it's kind of like its own little ecosystem in my room. I love knowing I have my own data. And that it's secure. And I can monitor when things are coming through and out of countries. Now, it actually happens a lot more. If you have a server, you see like people from China getting your stuff a lot. Now... It's fun. It was satisfying putting it together, seeing everything fit. It t taught me about Linux, networking, automation, how the internet works. More than any textbook I've deck. Well, I don't read books really, other than one through school. But better than any video I've seen have explained it so far. It was really just different, different hands down working on it. I guess on top of that, when something goes down, when there's a problem with the server, when I have a problem installing something, it's like I'm the handyman, I'm the one here, I have to fix it. But that's my full tour, that's the ultimate home server rack, front to back, top to bottom, and I love it. If you made it this far, uh, you're a real one, I know I was just kind of here talking, but I do really like how this video turned out, even though I'm just filming it right now. But it's blown me away building this. Now, if you have any suggestions for what I could add to it, Feel free to leave them in the comments. If the comments are turned off, I'll turn them back on. Oh my gosh. YouTube, you're killing me. Keep turning them off. But I love talking about this stuff. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell because we do a bunch of cool stuff with this. Go join my Discord, ages 13 to 17. I'm trying to get to 100 people there and we can start doing some actual hacking stuff. That's it. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys. <laughs>